All right, next up is swashplate setup. It's extremely important that when you are building your helicopter, that you follow the manufacturer specifications for the length of the linkages. That means the linkages coming from your servos up to your swashplate, and then from your swashplate up to your head. So make sure that you have followed along with your manufacturer's recommended uh, specifications for those lengths. And you also made sure that your servos were centered when you installed your linkages. That means that the arms were centered at nearly a 90 degree, at least as close as you can, while the servo was centered. A great tool for centering your servos is the Spectrum Smart Checker, which has a servo driver built into it. That's exactly what I did with mine. I just plugged in each servo, went to the servo driver's function, and centered the servos, and attached my arms as close to 90 degrees as the spline would allow. And then in the swashplate setup, I'll show you how to center the servos for the mid-range of travel. All right, so once again, we are streaming our iX20's screen to my TV here so that you guys can better see everything that's going on. Again, make sure if you're plugging in your battery that the pinion gear or the motor is unplugged, some way to keep it so if you accidentally throttle up on your radio, you aren't throttling up your motor and making the blade spin at you. Just always keep safety in mind, guys, when we're setting up our helicopters. I'm gonna plug in my battery here. And I'm gonna take my blade holder off, just in case the servos decide to initialize, they don't start binding up and spread my blades apart. And we're not gonna plug in our servos yet. We need to do some things, so follow along. Again, get your manual handy so that you can follow along with me. I'm gonna go to my forward programming menu. So once you have everything bound up, your forward programming menu on your DX and your IX radios will appear so that you can set up the flight controller. All right, forward programming is a menu that's in, I have it on my list because I've already set that up, but you would normally go to model adjust and go to forward programming, which we have down here. First step is to go to setup right there. So on your DX radios, you'll see a setup icon. Just scroll down to that and click on that. I'm gonna tap on it. And we're going to make sure, well, I mean, just real quick while we're here, you're gonna select, make sure that the gain channel is on gear. It should already be that way by default, but I mean, this is a factory, mo uh, this is a factory 6250 HX right out of the box. So it should be set to gear automatically. So step one in swash plate setup is go to swash plate at the top here. And we're gonna go to output setup. At the top, it's gonna give us, it's just giving us a, gen a generic field ID because what that means, what that's telling you is that the servo outputs are essentially turned off. You have to change that field to the type of servo that you are using to activate the servos. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap on the field and these servos are digital servos. So I'm gonna change it to 333 Hertz. You have other options. You have 200 Hertz and 90 Hertz and 70 Hertz. The lower the Hertz normally means that you're using an analog servo. So I'm yeah. gonna choose 333 because they are high, quick, digital servos and then we're going to go down to type so swash plate type as you guys can see here and i'll have a diagram as well to show you along is you can choose the different types of swash plates that are available to you this swash plate and we'll hit tap on normal to change it is the second one down here and keep note of the a b and c's on the swash plate diagram there that's a very important for when you're plugging in your servos. We'll get to that in just a second. So you do have a number of different swash plate types that you can choose from because there's so many different types of helicopters. Again, this is set up for any helicopter set essentially that you can use that is fly barless. So we're gonna choose this guy here. So that is the three servo 120 degree right there. That's good. So we're good. We're just gonna tap on back. And now that that's all set up, there's a diagram in the manual, and I'll have it shown here on the screen, that shows you where each servo should plug in. So this is important. This is where we're gonna start plugging in things into our flight controller. If you look at our diagrams, and the first diagram I'll show you will show if you're using a normal PWM ESC, like every other ESC besides the smart ones. It goes into port number one. And then follow along with the diagram for servos A, B, and C to plug into your 6250 HX flight controller. 
But if you're using a smart ESC like me, I'm going to plug my smart ESC into port number two. That's because the hardware on port number two supports the bi-directional telemetry communication between ESC, flight controller, and radio. So you gotta use number two for that. And then like I said, follow along with the diagram to see exactly where the other servos should plug into. I'm going to just quickly go ahead and do that. We got all our servos plugged in and I'm gonna start testing out my pitch. You're gonna look at your swash plate and you're gonna look at your pitch on your blades and this is just general eyeballing it to see if your pitch is going the right direction. So at full pitch, it looks like I'm going negative. So something's backwards. So we need to go into setup again and we're gonna go to swash plate. We're gonna go to output and we're gonna look at direction. All of them are normal right now by default. And we're going to reverse one at a time until we get the right controls out of our swash plate. So I'm gonna reverse this one. That's not quite right. I'm gonna reverse the next one and move my pitch. Nope, that's not right either. I'm gonna reverse all three. And now when I move my pitch, my throttle, I can tell that I'm getting positive when my throttle sticks all the way up and negative when my throttle sticks all the way down. Next thing to check is to see if you are getting the right controls. So I'm moving my roll and I can tell that my swash plate is rolling in the right direction. Good. And if I move my pitch, that's moving in the right direction. So that's all we need to do with the direction setup. So next up is to do the sub trim function. So sub trim is where we're going to, and we'll tap on this. Once you go to the sub trim menu, it's going to center your servos. They're not gonna move with your sticks at all because we're just adjusting the sub trim on all three of the servos. Channel one will be servo A, channel two will be servo B, and channel three will be servo C. So we're gonna look at servo A, and it's very important at this point that you use this function to center the arm on the servo. We'll get a close up on it here. So we're looking at the servo, we wanna make sure that the arm is at a 90 degree to the body of the servo, like so. If it's not, we use the output trim, sub trim, to adjust it till it is. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. So in particular, the servo that we're pointed at here is servo C, so that's output channel three. We'll tap on the number and we'll adjust it. And you can see how it moves while we're moving it. So your goal is to move it. So that arm is at a perfect 90 degree to the body. And then once you've determined that your sub trim has centered the arms on all your servos, go ahead and double check that your swatch plate looks like it's level. And if it's not, at this point, that's when you want to adjust your linkages slightly. You likely have one that's a little long or short, causing the swatch plate to be a tad off. Before you exit the sub trim menu, right now is a great opportunity to throw your pitch gauge onto your blades and verify that you're at zero degrees pitch you may need to adjust your linkages that go from the swash plate up to your main blades to attain this zero degrees pitch. So go ahead and do that now. So next up is the AFR menu. AFR stands for adjustable function rate. Essentially it is the adjustable rate at which you can roll in pitch and how much collective you have. Key part with this is to have our pitch gauge on the blade. I'll set my pitch gauge to where I'm seeing zero pitch. And then I'll full, hold full right. I'll go to roll and I'll adjust the number until I see that it's at 12.5. I think that's good. Not much of a change there. And then we'll do the same thing for the pitch. So the forward and backward movement, you're gonna want to move your blades this way and that way. And we'll pull full back and we'll adjust as so. Again, making sure that our collective is right in the middle. Okay. And then lastly, you'll just adjust your collective pitch range to your liking. So I personally like to have it at around 12 degrees of pitch all the way up and down. If you want a less aggressive helicopter, you can adjust that down or more. And that looks good enough to me. 
And that's all we have to do for the collective setup. Let's move on to tail setup. 